Here we go. William Burr, how do I come to terms with being average? Well, let me tell you, sir, you're asking the right guy. Um, love everything you do. Come to see your show on August 23rd at the MGM. That's right. I'm going to be at the MGM in Foxwoods, Connecticut on August 23rd. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, I have a super secret, very special show that I'm going to be doing at the end of August. All right. I'm teasing it right now with another comedian that is way beyond me or my abilities. And I've always wanted to work with them. And I reached out to him and we're going to do a co-headlining show where you ask. I'm not saying shit until tickets go on sale. When you ask, I told you towards the end of August. Why, Bill? Why are you doing this, you ask? Because I'm learning from other radio guys. You kind of put half the information out there. You get everybody at the end, edge of their seats. And then the fucking Blackhawks score two goals on you and it's over. <clears throat> Sorry. How do I come to terms that I just won't be financially successful to the point where money is not an issue? Jesus Christ, dude. That, that just made me feel sad. Why would you, why would you think that? All right, I guess he's going to go into detail as to why. He goes, I'm 30, held many technical positions in the corporate ladder at a few big companies. It is everything office space made it out to be, which has driven me to file patents or ideas and improvements as well as start a few side businesses that didn't seem to really take flight. Well, there you go, sir. You know, you're, 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 you're basing your self-worth on other people employing you. All right. God knows I got enough shit on my podcast. E-voice, LegalZoom, Stance.com, all of that shit for you to run a fucking side business while you're holding down your job at this corporate nightmare that you don't want to be in. Believe in your talents. Dude, you think I just walked on stage and tried three fucking jokes and then it worked? I bombed for fucking years. For years and years and years. Like almost... The first 11 years of my career, I swear to God, every time I went on stage, it, it was a crapshoot whether it was going to go well or not. It was even longer than that. It, it's basically once you start selling tickets and people come out to your show that the bombing goes way down. And it also makes you softer as a comic because people are coming out to see you. They give you a giant ovation as you go out there. They're, they're already on your side. It's a home game. All right. Before you sell tickets as a comedian, every night is a fucking away game. And it's a rivalry game. And they fucking hate you. All right? So I think you're a really talented guy. I think, you know what? A lot of smart people are slightly depressed, which is what the, how this is reading. And, dude, you just got to get yourself, force yourself to pick yourself up off the mat and throw yourself against the wall. All right? Throw, not yourself. Sorry. Stupid idea. Don't throw yourself against the wall. Whatever idea you got. Just keep putting it out there, all right? And you patent all those fucking things, and you get yourself a goddamn lawyer. So when these corporate cunts come sniffing around and they want to dangle some carrot in front of you, you make sure you get as much as that carrot as humanly fucking possible, all right? Is a donkey really that dumb that it just keeps walking towards that carrot? Is it looking at it like it's a mountain? Like, wow, it's just way off in the distance. You know, is the donkey sitting there praying to its God as it just keeps, ah, oh, thank you. What, what, what the fuck would their God be? Can't say Jesus, I'll piss them off. You know, somebody told me the other day, why don't you make fun of Muslims, you pussy, right? <laughs> I make fun of my own fucking religion. All right? I stay within my wheelhouse. I make fun of what the fuck I know. You heard me try to talk about Eastern Europe. I don't know shit about it. It embarrasses me. I don't know anything about Muslims other than they throw down the yoga mat every day around 4 o'clock. When all the stoners start getting baked, they're actually talking to their higher power, which is my higher power and it's your higher power. We're all praying to the same fucking vibe, that same spirit, you know? It's so fucking ridiculous and everybody's got to do it their own way. No, you got to fucking tap your elbow twice before you did it and you didn't do that. So now I'm going to saw your fucking head off. Yeah, and people people still show up and give it money and put on a silly hat, right? Who's getting who? Anytime I think I'm going to die, I always start praying, and I pray to the God that I was told, you know, 
I say a prayer. I say a prayer every time my plane takes off and right before it lands, every fucking time. I say a prayer that it doesn't fucking crash, you know? And when I think about it crashing, I know exactly what I would say to a higher power. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? And then it'll be like when I die and I go and get judged and he's like, sorry for what? And it just, it's, you know what? Yahweh, Lord, Buddha, whatever the hell you are, uh, just straight uh, straight across the board, sorry. So for the, the, yeah, all of it. The whole fucking kit and caboodle. Other than 8% of it, the, the other 92%. I'm just sorry. I knew it was wrong. I knew what I was doing. I tried to pull myself out of the muck, and I just, I was too weak a person, you know? Which maybe that's on you because you didn't fucking, you know, you put a four-cylinder in me. You know, instead of giving me enough fucking horsepower mentally to pull myself out of the ditch. Yeah, I am blaming you on some way. You know, you made me, you know, the fuck. If I made a car and it didn't run, I'm going to blame the car. Oh, do what you got to do. Whatever. Sorry. Anyways, back to this here. Um, he goes, I work 50 to 60 hours a week feeling burnt while trying my Last side business. Uh, with no time but work, I'm about to realize, fuck it. Dude, don't don't quit. Do not quit. He goes, uh, he's about ready to say, fuck it. It just won't be me. I won't be the guy with a lake house or a guy who can buy cars with a briefcase of money or a guy with 22-year-olds on his arm at 40. All right, now you're scaring me, dude. I thought you were just some guy that, you know, wanted to, you know, wanted to invent something and uh, feel good about himself. But you sound like, dude, you oh, you want to move up in your company? Tell him, tell him that the, in your corporate fucking uh, company there, just tell him that that's what you want. Just walk in and just say, listen, this is what I want a house by a lake. I want to buy vintage cars with a briefcase full of money that nobody knows where it came from. And I want some 22 year asshole, 22 year old ass on my arm, the whole, my whole fucking life. I just want to keep trading them in. You know, like that guy who lived across the street who got the new Corvette every year because he worked for Chevy. Right? You tell them that shit, they're going to love it because they're going to be like, this guy is a fucking sociopath. He doesn't want to find love. He doesn't want to make the world a better place. He wants to go out there and get his... That's great. He wants a house by a lake. We'll give him a house by a lake and we'll give him the chemicals to dump into it. That's okay. You want that house by a lake? You got to take our fucking waste and dump it in that goddamn lake. All right. Now, I want you to practice shrugging your shoulders. Well, you know, I don't know. I got that. I want to, we want to see that you're going to be able to do that. All right. And if you get caught, you got to take the fall. Walk up to that podium over there. Let me, let me see you just improvise taking the fall. We're going to throw out a couple of scenarios. All right. Just relax. We, we got a glass of water up there. Have a drink. Have a drink. Okay. All right. First scenario. Um, fucking Cheryl Crow somehow gets behind some cunt that figures out that we have three-year-olds uh, making the pampers down there in Honduras. All right. We need you to take the fall. Go. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh it's come to our attention that uh, some of our uh, practices in the uh, undergarment, infant undergarment industry have uh, come into question. Um, we are looking into it. I accept full responsibility. Uh, the buck stops with me. And I am the head of that division. And uh, I don't like babies. I I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know where to go. Ah, fuck it. Fuck you and your leg. That isn't good. That was bad. And we can see you sweat from over here. Go back to your cubicle. That's like parole. That's like a parole hearing in a corporate office. You know, they bring you in once every seven years and they see how good you are at lying. And if you're not fucking good at it, they send you back to the hole, back to your cubicle. It's like reverse Shawshank. Um, anyways, let's plow ahead here. So this, this guy's depressing the shit out of me. He's given up on his dream and he wants young bitches on his fucking arm. I don't know what to do with this guy. He goes, I'm starting to think I need to accept the corporate grind for the next 35 years or the whole life is going to pass me by spending all my free time trying to start something. Your thoughts. 
It wouldn't be right unless I end, end it this way. Thanks and go fuck yourself. All right. I don't think you're that bad a guy, sir. I'm just fucking with you. Uh, all right. Don't quit. All right. Don't quit. On, you could, if you quit on yourself, nobody's going to believe in you. It's going to affect your entire fucking life. You can't fucking quit ever. You never quit unless you're wrong, you know? If you're fucking wrong. But then what you do is you just go in another direction. That's all. Right? Like, let's say you always wanted to be a singer, but you sing like me. At some point, you got to have that honest moment and be like, I, I fucking stick at this. But who's to say that you're, you're not a good producer? You couldn't record singers, you know? Or you couldn't manage singers. Or you couldn't go down to the church choir and just lip sync and act like you were singing. Right? Or get a sex change, Right? And turn yourself into some hot piece of ass and be, get to the top of the pop charts. There's always a way, sir. And I'm not saying to get a sex change. I'm not saying not to get one. All right? Just listen to me here. <laughs> Just fucking keep... Don't fucking give up on that shit. That's, you know what it is? That's your passion. Your passion is what you're doing when you're not working 50 to 60 hours a week. All right? And the reason why this is coming off so depressing is because your heart is in that and this voice is getting louder every day saying you don't have it what it takes and you need to quit. I've been there as a fucking comic. It's the fucking worst. It hits you. It hits you right in the chest. All right? You got to push through that. All right? What I do is I come up with new jokes and I go even harder the next show. So that's what you got to do. You got to come up with a new Floby, a new George Foreman grill, a new fucking iPad, whatever the hell you're working on. You got to go even harder. Right. And someday you'll have a podcast and you'll repeat shit nine times in a row and you'll mispronounce stuff. Right. And you'll have a house by a lake. I don't have a house by a lake, but I had one come through my fucking roof three months ago. Sorry. All right, sir. Don't quit. That will crush me knowing that you quit. There's your halftime speech. Do not ever fucking give up on yourself. All right. What I would do if I was in your fucking situation, I would quit the corporate job first. I would I would downsize my life. All right? You got to make the sacrifices. Downsize your fucking life. Take a job that pays less with less hours. Live with less. Do you need all those fucking T-shirts? Do you need all that shit? Do you need a laptop? Do you need an iPad too? Do you need a mini iPad? Do you need every new fucking cell phone? You don't. You don't. How many fucking glasses can you drink out of at once? One, maybe two, if you join in a frat. All right? You drink out of one. The reality is, sir, you need one bowl, one plate, one fork, one knife, one spoon. You know, you could have all your shit. Yeah, you need a fucking, you need a bed. You need a, t you need a TV. You got you to stay in touch, right? Because you got to see what's out there, what they're selling for 1995. But other, other than that, what do, you, what do you need? Nothing. You don't need shit. So downsize your fucking life. Have a fucking yard sale, sir. And with that money, you know, go buy whatever the fuck it is you need to buy to invent some shit so you can get out of there. All right? But by all means, do not accept this as your fate. It isn't. You just, you're doing your open mics like I did. And you know what? A lot of people fucking quit. I don't know what they're doing, okay? But are they doing stand-up in a parking lot in an air-conditioned tent in Rhode Island next month like I am? No, they are not. <laughs> All right, you know what I'm saying, man. I hope that, that fucking pumps you up. Don't fucking quit or uh, that'll make me sad. You want to make me sad? You fucking cunt. I don't even know you and you're making me sad. Stop it.